Hello everyone and welcome to this month's webinar on the topic of giving feedback across cultures. Thank you all for joining. It's great to see um, such a diverse international group again. We've got people I think from all over the world, from Taiwan, from Brazil, Egypt, and I'm sure I've missed out lots of other countries as well, but great to see you all with us. And it's great to see such a strong interest in this topic around giving feedback. I think it's such a universal challenge for, for most of us in the workplace. And certainly when we run our courses, our workshops, we'll often be asked, well, how can I give feedback in a really good way? How can I get feedback from my manager? And what, what do I do with the feedback when I receive it? So I think for most of us, it's, it's a real challenge. And I know myself very briefly introduce you to Amanda. Um, very, very happy to have her here with us today. Amanda had um, a long and illustrious corporate career um, working in strategic communications, marketing, um, working with organizations like Disney, and I think she's going to share some of her experiences there with you. She's now a facilitator, a mentor. She still works as a brand consultant. She's a writer. She um, does work with us here at the London School as well. And I think it's going to be a really interesting session today. So without me talking anymore, um, I'll hand you over to Amanda and I'll see you back at the end of the session. So please enjoy, stay engaged and I'll see you at the end. Thanks, Amanda. Over to you now. I'll turn myself off. Hello. Thank you, Cathy. And welcome everybody to this webinar for giving feedback across cultures. It's a very big topic, so we are going to focus on four key themes today, which are um, defining feedback, so I'm going to invite you for some ideas on that. Then we're going to look at how constructive feedback can improve motivation, effectiveness and productivity. And as Cathy said, I will be talking a little bit about my experience with Disneyland Paris and also other organizations I've worked with. Obviously, there is sometimes call for receiving negative feedback. So we're going to look at some scenarios where we can actually handle those situations. And lastly, we're going to look at how we can communicate positively in the workplace. So I hope that is all right with everybody. So let's get cracking. So this is a chance for you to sort of think a little bit and maybe start writing on the screen. If I just ask the question, what is feedback? What is feedback? How would you define feedback? Any answers? There is like most business definitions, something that we can look at right now. So this feels like a very scientific explanation. The process in which the effect or output of an action is returned to modify the next action. Some of those ideas were captured in what you sent me just now. For those of us who are more visual, like myself, I tend to prefer a little diagram. So the feedback loop is often referred to in business, commerce, manufacturing, creative industries, you name it. And it's a very simple process, some of which um, you have already described in your ideas. So we have an action, and based on that reaction, there is a reaction, so an outcome or effect. And then what we do, we notice what reaction there is before we go on to modifying to improve the original action based on what we call our desired outcome. As an example, um, as uh, I've mentioned before, I worked for Disneyland Paris between 1991 and 1997. Do not try and work out my age there, but that was a long time ago. Having said that, though, one of my jobs was uh, to run the ticketing department in the theme park. So there are about 350 staff and we had one job called ticket taking. So there were a fair few hundred ticket takers at the turnstiles and gates of Disneyland Paris. And their job was to welcome the guests with a lovely warm Disney smile, making them feel right at home and also checking that their ticket would go through the turnstile smoothly. This was a system that had been used in America, in California and obviously in Florida. 
So tried and tested for 25, 40 years. So the reaction to this particular task was brilliant in spring, summer and autumn. Then came winter. Now winter is very mild in Florida and California, but in Paris is absolutely freezing. So even though our cast members or staff wore big coats and boots, they were miserable standing at this particular station, welcoming people into the park because they were so cold. So the reaction that we noticed was that cast members were getting ill, they were very unhappy, they were complaining, and therefore it was very poor customer service. So as their manager, I was able to convince management and finance to install individual foot heaters so every single cast member would be actually warm during the winter months and this had never been never happened in a disney theme park before so it was unprecedented so that's just one example of a feedback loop okie doke well let's go into a poll now um so this is up to you I think Kathy's going to put the uh, poll in the uh, in the box. So the answer the basically is I only give feedback when there is a problem. We have 7.14% agree that they give feedback only when they have a problem. Okay, and that there we've got another 92% plus that actually disagree. Well, that's good to know. So you don't just give feedback when there's a problem. I am delighted to hear that. Let's move on. Okay, thank you so much for voting. Okay, and I'm going to give you another example of my time at Disney. And this is all about how feedback can improve motivation, effectiveness, and productivity. Clearly very important factors in any business context. Now, this is a very delicate case of feedback. Cast members, whatever department they worked in all wear costumes so they go into the costume warehouse it's like a uniform they pick up their shirts trousers or mickey mouse suit whatever it is and they are all expected to wear these particular costumes now as a ticket seller you had to work in a booth with maybe five or six other colleagues so you were in relatively close proximity now this particular scenario was with a german um cast member and the reason I say uh, I talk about this person's nationality is because it actually had cultural significance so staff were coming to me and saying this particular person actually has terrible personal hygiene this is a very sensitive issue so this person actually had very bad body odor not the most uh, not the most should I say easy situation to give feedback on no one dared address it with the cast member so they came to me their manager and basically said could you please address it so what i did i took this person to one side and i tried to understand if he thought it was a he had a problem so i said are you aware that there's a problem around your personal hygiene i've had some feedback from cast members who say there is rather you know a strong odor coming from you and of course he was actually quite shocked because in his mind and because of his sort of German culture, he was trying to be efficient, economical, and very aware of the environment. So at the end of the day, he wasn't changing his shirt every day. He was making the same shirt last for a week because he wanted to save on water. He wanted to save on uh, the environment. And he also didn't want to incur extra costs because that's, what, that's his cultural upbringing. At the end of the day, um, he understood that, of course, this was a problem for everybody else. So he just changed his shirt every day and basically it was, it was uh, resolved. And I, I tell this story because it's, it's, not, it's not very business focused, but it actually has a massive impact. It's such a personal story. And sometimes the personal feedback is actually more difficult to, to get across. So in terms of the actual um, feedback in this case, it actually mot it did motivate the wider team because the problem was listened to, understood and resolved. It led to a way more effective, productive working environment. Why? Because people stopped avoiding working with this person, which 
led to nightmares and scheduling. And it also helped the individual have a better understanding of the cultural values in the workplace. It wasn't about efficiency, saving water, saving cost. It was more about personal hygiene, more important in the culture of Disneyland or, or the Walt Disney Company as a whole. And, and equally, this person was much more widely accepted within, within his team. So that is one example about how to improve productivity, motivation, and effectiveness. Okay. At the end of the day, feedback is about communication. And I want to take you through now a few thoughts around how we transmit messages and the purpose of these messages. So if we want to transmit a message that is understood, first, we need to understand the other person to whom we're transmitting this message and also how can we make ourselves understood otherwise there simply is no communication and this is not necessarily about foreign languages or anything it's about making oneself understood and also understanding the other so very basic rules here you have to have respect for the other person this other person may be very different from you this other person may work in a completely different culture to you but respect is the first point. Second of all, being aware and careful of the messages that you are conveying to this other person. Sometimes we might say something very swiftly and we haven't thought it through and it might have an emotional impact. I'm going to share a very personal and difficult anecdote here about an experience where, of mine when I received feedback from my CEO when I was working in a very senior position in a, in a branding consultancy, this is many years ago. It was my six month performance review. And like most organizations, there was a performance review form. I filled in my bit. I assumed my CEO had filled in his bit. And basically I was called into my meeting feeling quite motivated because I had achieved so much in six months. And I sat down and the first thing that he said was, I don't like you. Well, you can imagine to, to actually be given that kind of feedback at a performance review, it was very, very destabilizing. He then went on to explain why he didn't like me. Of course, the whole thing was very unprofessional and very demotivating for me. And of course, I was very upset. I did not show my upset. Um, but I basically tried to turn the conversation around to all the good things that I thought I had done. Needless to say, I then went to um, HR and explained that this was not, not an acceptable situation and it got, it got resolved. But just to say that, that these things happen. People say things without thinking about the emotional impact. Clearly, my CEO at the time had not seen my webinar about how to uh, be careful about the emotional impact of your message. The third, the third strand of the basic rules is to practice. If you're giving feedback to anyone, your boss, your colleague, your peer, your staff member, your team members, first of all, think about what you're going to say. Say it out loud, write it down, make notes and practice it. It does not, it does not just come easily. And if you are tempted to get angry, you're tempted to get heated, then, oh yes, and body language as well. Absolutely, the body message is very important. How you, how you, if you're sort of standing like this and getting really angry um, and being defensive, that could also be um, a problem. We're actually going to, uh, Marcos, I think, we're actually going to uh, talk a little bit about body language later on. But yes, yeah, so respect the other person, be aware of the message and its emotional impact and the content, and then practice whatever you're going to do before you do it. Okay, let's move on to the next point. So this is up to you guys. I'd love you to give me some ideas. How do you think we can make sure we understand the people that we're giving feedback to? So what can we do to understand these people before we give them feedback? So please feel free to write on the screen with your pen or the text box or just in the chat box and we can have a look at what you say. to give feedback to. The next slide gives a little bit more detail on this and this is all about understanding a person's frame of reference. 
Now, we all have a frame of reference, whether that's a cultural frame of reference or a personal frame of re reference. <laughs> Couldn't get that word out. Reference. Let me say that one again. So within this frame of reference, we have values, we have knowledge, we have needs and we have experience. So this is very much like you were saying before, someone mentioned context as uh, how we could understand someone. Someone mentioned uh, getting to know someone personally, and that would be reflected of their needs. Uh, also, let me just check what else was said before. We had, yes, the personal situation, observing them in action, which would then also reflect on their experience. So yes, a number of ways that we can get to understand their frame of reference. We're going to do another little poll very quickly. Um, so the poll box is going to come back into the middle of your screen. And the question is, I take time to understand the other person's values before I give them feedback. That you guys take the time to understand the other person's values. Excellent. I think, did anyone not vote? No, no one didn't vote, so that's great. All right then. So let's have a look now at what that means in terms of cross-cultural frames of references. So we talked about a respect, so, and we talked about values, but we have a number of different kinds of values, cultural values, work values, personal values. Again, um, I always find talking about these subjects quite easy, um, or at least more interesting, to talk about experiences that, that I, I might have encountered myself. So I actually lived in France for 18 years. Um, I, I studied there, I went to school there, studied there, and I worked there. And then I returned to the UK. And at one point I was working in advertising. After my time at Disney, I, I went into advertising. And I was working for this um, very trendy British-based uh, uh, advertising agency. It was very hip, actually, and very creative. And so I was clearly, after 18 years in France, a bit Latin. I was talking with my hands all the time. I was saying, why don't we do this and let's do that? And there was a lot of sort of gestures going on. And I was taken to one side once and um, told by a friend, do you realize that people think you're really aggressive? and that you're really, really loud. And this is not really how we do things around here. So basically the, the British were saying, this is all a little too in my face. And what was interesting there, I guess, that they wanted to respect my values, but they didn't understand them. So in order for me to fit into that particular agency, I had to understand their working values as well as their cultural values. And that was actually a very good lesson for me. So I calm down. As you can see, I'm using my hands a lot less. I'm sitting here quietly. And therefore, that was actually a very important um, learning for me. So someone also mentioned uh, in the ideas, how do you get to understand the context and the knowledge of other cultures? So how do they work? See them in action? Yes, absolutely. But also do your research, find out from other people how they are. And let's remember that even if you have a knowledge of other cultures and how they work, not necessarily always um, indicative of everybody's individual needs. I'm not sure if we really take the time to understand the values. Aha, okay, Ahmed's just saying, maybe he doesn't take the time to understand the values and someone else is agreeing with Ahmed. So yeah, understanding values is a really important um, part of giving constructive feedback. And yes, it's about preparing. We'll talk about how to prepare constructive feedback later. But yes, values are very, very critical. Personal, working and cultural values. And also the needs, the needs of the individual. I actually have a need to express myself quite openly. So if someone says I have to sit here all very quiet without using my hands. In fact, I'm sitting here now and normally I stand when I give talks. So this is actually culturally quite a difficult thing for me. Um, so my need is to be able to move around. And that's why um, I am actually using my hands to help with that. So needs of the individual within the cultural context and also practicing. Like I said before, if you practice giving feedback, write it down. Practice it out loud. Imagine you're talking to the person. And has this person ever received feedback before? Do they understand the mechanisms of feedback? So 
We've got some feedback coming through the chat. It's easy to think to do, but we perhaps we go, um, yes, maybe we don't go too deep into understanding people's values. And Marco says it is very important. It is very important to go into the depth of the values. Absolutely. So we're having like parallel chats here around some of the values, but the values piece is clearly important. That's great. Excellent. Everybody seems to agree on that. So understanding the experience of this individual that has been has been given feedback or not. Some people have never been given feedback in their life. They, they might not know what to expect. So be very careful on this um, road. Yes, I think people are saying it's not easy. Of course, it's not easy and it takes a lot of practice and definitely practice and training even. I mean, I um, again, I keep referring to Disney. The reason I do this, guys, by the way, the reason I keep referring to my time at Disneyland Paris, I was there for six years. It's a, it's a global icon. The Walt Disney Company is just quite astonishing and amazing. And because I was a, a Disney leader, I was um, sent, packed off to Disney University and we had this management series and we just learned so much about communication, about training, about motivating staff, about leadership, about giving feedback across cultures. And um, it was not easy. We, we had to learn the hard way. When I gave my feedback to this German chap around his body odor, it was it was a really difficult thing to do. I know I just told you like it was something I did every day, but it was not. I gave it a lot of thought. I prepared it. It was it was very, very difficult. Um, similarly, when you're trying to understand people's values, in this case, the German chap's values were all about being economical, efficient and eco friendly. Our values were all about, you know, good presentation, personal hygiene. Very, very challenging. So it takes practice like like everything. So another little slide here to talk about modes of perception. Oh, hang on a minute. Coaching training really supports with going forward and having conversations that touch on people's values. Very good. Thanks for that sort of suggestion, Sarah. So in the same way, we all have frames of reference, cultural ones and personal ones. We all have modes of perception. And this is basically how we react to events in front of us. So it's the interpretation of everything that comes our way. So how do we perceive this? Do we, like my gestures in the advertising agency, they perceived it as aggressive, loud, etc. Oh, we're still having some feedback around uh, the values piece being completely necessary. That's great. Um, so mode of perceptions, I'm going to ask you to jump in a little bit to give me some ideas. So the way we describe modes of perception is what are people's attitudes, let's say, to the feedback? What are their expectations of this feedback? What are their fears of this feedback? And what kind of interpersonal relationships do they have that could give you context for this feedback? So on the next slide, guys, I'm going to ask you to um, give me some ideas. What kind of attitudes do you think people might have towards um, feedback? What kind of expectations? What kind of fears? OK, so again, I invite you to go in like defensiveness. Some people are very optimistic. Others are very pessimistic. You will, you will know the, the expression half glass full, half glass empty. Some people might be very generous, uh, others selfish, shy, confident. So yes, in terms of expectations of feedback, they want to maybe feel valued. I want to feel valued. I want to be liked, I want to be promoted, understood, respected. Please treat me as an equal. That could be an expectation. The fears you can see, maybe they don't want to let the team down. They don't want to be left out. And interpersonal relationships, not everyone is sociable. Some people like to be on their own. Maybe they prefer one to one, etc. Some people are leaders and followers. So again, like the frames of references, trying to understand the modes of perception of the person you're giving feedback to, whatever kind of feedback it is. So if someone is very optimistic, you want to go in with a relatively optimistic sort of approach. If someone is pessimistic, then how are you going to try and actually reframe that, change the mind state? How are you going to make that person understand? It might be also validating that person's attitude 
We're going to talk about validation in a second. Okay, so here's some more ideas for you. I guess in conclusion to this rather meaty section about um, how to understand the other, if you understand the person's frame of reference, modes of perception, you basically can give constructive feedback to anyone, whatever their culture and whatever profession they work in. It takes a lot of work though to get to that point of understanding their frames of reference and modes of perception. I do invite you though to use this process when you are thinking about giving feedback on, at any level to anyone. Okay, um, so now we're going to have a look at um, a little scenario. Um, part of my career, very long of course, so we can't talk about it too much. Um, I've done quite a lot of work in uh, the voluntary sector, so volunteering um, for people and learning what we call sort of psychosocial habits. So how do we respond to people um, when there's a negative situation and how do we kind of help them get move forward and go with some, let's say, positive outcomes, positive um, actions. So this is a scenario. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I forgot. There was a poll first. My bad. OK, I'm getting ahead of myself. So hang on a minute. Let's do the poll. OK, so when I receive negative feedback, I am demotivated. Agreed. Quite mixed views here. That's good. So it looks like we've got 71% roughly who agree that you're demotivated when you receive negative feedback. But still almost 30% who say they disagree with that. What else have we got? Um, Oh, I'll always be a client when getting negative feedback, okay. And something around confidence. Depends on how it's delivered. Absolutely, very good points. All of these are very, very good points. Which in fact leads perfectly, let's end this poll then. Um, this leads perfectly back into the next slide. So here's a scenario for you guys. It's all about remaining centered so negativity as we know is very can be very destabilizing and when i say negative feedback that often is actually delivered in a very very bad way it's a very negative way so here's a scenario it's your boss or your colleague and they're giving you some feedback in an impatient angry upset voice so clearly it's a negative sort of tone of voice and they say something like this is the worst report or presentation I have ever seen. Not very motivating to be on the receiving end of that. In fact, let me do it with a proper voice. This is the worst report I have ever seen. Not very pleasant in terms of the way of receiving feedback. So let's have a look at some ideas about how you might respond to this feedback. The idea is we know better. So we're going to remain centered. We are going to keep very calm and grounded. Even though the other person is angry, upset, frustrated, tearing their hair out, being very negative. So how do we stay grounded and calm? Well, obviously an obvious thing is to breathe deeply and easily. Just breathing, breathing, be aware of your breath. And I, this is a technique I often use um, in my workshops, but also in very difficult situations when people are very demotivated or frustrated, is to visualize a positive scenario. And that scenario might be walking on the beach, climbing a mountain, lying in a bath, doesn't matter, something that makes you feel very good about yourself. So visualizing a positive scenario. You can do these very quickly, by the way. You don't have to sort of go off for 15 minutes and meditate. This is something you can do quite quickly. Clearly, you're trying to remain centered and you want to open a dialogue with this person who's trying to close it down, actually, by being very negative. So you want to listen to this person. You want to listen in order to create this dialogue. And we talked a little bit earlier about validation, how you validate somebody's emotion and how you make sure they understand that they're being understood, if that makes sense. When you validate someone's emotion, even if you don't agree with it, you are establishing a rapport. So for example, someone might say to me, I am so frustrated with my boss at the moment. 
they keep giving me extra work and I basically don't have the time or the energy to do it. So the person starts off with, I'm very frustrated. And you, you say, that must be very difficult being so frustrated like that. So you're validating the emotion. You're not trying to say, oh, don't worry, don't be frustrated, that's not a problem. Nothing worse than that. So basically we're looking to validate the emotion, whatever it is. So you play it back, say, that must be very difficult for you, or that must be very upsetting for you, or I totally understand how that feels. Okay, validate the emotion. Not enough. What we want to do is construct an alternative scenario. And in this case, we're going to offer some positive options. So if you recall, this is the worst presentation I have ever seen is the feedback you're getting. And this is how you're going to respond in a calm, confident, understanding voice. I can see this is making you very upset. So you're validating the emotion. And I'm really sorry that you feel this way. You do, you're trying to establish a rapport. I would like to improve my report or my presentation. So you're, again, you're creating a dialogue. And would you help me understand specifically what is not working and what I can change for the better? So you're actually offering up alternative actions scenarios. There are so many examples we could share, but obviously we don't have time today. But this, this sort of process of validating the emotion, listening to the person, and constructing um, a bear, sort of optional scenarios is tried and tested. It's very hard to do because when somebody shouts at you or gives you negative feedback, your instant reaction, as someone mentioned earlier, is to be defensive or to be negative back. So it does take a lot of experience and practice to rise above to remain centered. So again, I invite you to sort of have a think about how you might apply this sort of technique when you are giving feedback or receiving negative feedback. So communicating, this is our last section. Um, just checking the time. Yes, I'm just about within my time range. Um, so this is about giving positive feedback in the workplace. Um, so I've just got a few pictures. These are some of my clients from various different workshops I've run. What do you notice about the body language? Um, got a few things going on. So the picture with the woman with her hand up and the man looking at her, what do you notice about that body language? That is, that is pretty much what was happening here. Clearly the person was dominating the conversation, being quite dismissive, almost saying, stop, I'm not interested in what you have to say. In the smaller pictures, um, with the two people leaning in on the top right, here you can see there's a real sense of collaboration and they're leaning in so they're almost mirroring their sort of body language and in the third little picture with the three um the three women they're all smiling although they have different gestures there's a real sense of openness so again i'm sure you all are aware smiling being open very important in terms of constructing positive feedback okay let's keep going so this is about how you give feedback. We always were taught in Disney to applaud people in public, give praise or say well done or congratulate in public, but to be critical in private. If you want to be critical, and when we, mean, when we say critical, we mean constructively critical, not personally offensive or insulting, like my ex boss who told me he didn't like me. So being critical in this case means being constructively critical. And let's be honest, feedback should motivate, not demotivate, not destabilize. It should be a positive, motivating experience. So in this, so in order to imagine you have to give some pretty difficult feedback, it doesn't matter what. Rather than go straight in and say, OK, guys, you're doing this wrong. It's not good enough. We need to do better. You've done this, this, this. Strongly recommend that you go in and firstly, you acknowledge the merit or successes and give specifics. For example, your present, your marketing, stra your strategy, or your marketing strategy presentation to the board was very clear. Uh, Susan. Uh, so Susan's feeling 
quite content to have this positive feedback. Personal qualities. You came across as very confident and knowledgeable. Again, nice to hear. The value to the team or the company. As a result of your presentation, if we implement this, it looks like we will improve sales and our reputation. Okay, so you're talking about specifics of the event, personal qualities demonstrated, and then the value to the broader population. But this is about giving some critical um, feedback. So then you go on to the constructive criticism and the specifics might be, um, even though your big thinking ideas were very good, you were a bit weak or Actually, let me take that back. I wouldn't say big. There were some challenges in how you're going to implement your strategy. There wasn't enough detail on resources, project management and budgeting. So those personal gaps, you might say, actually, in that case, you need you actually need um, some training or coaching to help you with project management, staffing and resources and the impact on the team and company. If we don't fix this, if we don't actually have um, a good implementation plan, then our sales may not increase and our reputation might be challenged. So that's just that is just a theoretical example. Um, so start with the good stuff and then give, bring in the sort of more critical stuff as an example. I'm aware I'm talking a lot. Hope you guys are still listening there. Can I have a show of hands? Are you are you still there, everybody? Uh oh, can I see the hands? Yes, I can see the hands. Yes, I can see the hands. Okay, great, 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 great. Thanks. Um, okay, Doug, this is the last slide we're coming to and hopefully um, it will give you again a tool to take back into the workplace wherever you are, whichever cultures you're working with. So it's about preparing for constructive, uh, politically correct presents frankness. Okay. Sorry, I'm reading somebody else's, uh, somebody else's uh, notes here. Anyway, this is our final slide, and this is all, again, a tool that you can take back into the workplace in terms of preparing for constructive feedback. So, first of all, be very clear on the issue or question you want to discuss. What specifically do you want to, what specifically do you want to give feedback on? Who is the person that you're communicating it with? So, who is this person? And then you drill down, and so then you look at the information about the person. What is their frame of reference, values, needs, experience, knowledge, the slides we've talked about earlier? What is their attitude, expectations, fears, and, and how are their interpersonal relationships? So you're preparing all this information. Okay, then we haven't talked about this, but this is very important. What is the mo where is the most favorable setting? Where are you going to give this feedback? If it's difficult feedback, not in an open plan office, no. Not in the ladies or the gents toilet, no. Not in some place where the other person might feel uncomfortable. Find a favorable setting that works for both of you or for more if there's more people involved. And then when is the best time for this feedback? Not at four o'clock on Friday afternoon when you all had a full work week and everybody's brain is drained and you're tired and you're looking forward to the weekend. So pick a time that might be actually very useful and very um, productive, let's say. You want the person to be receptive to this feedback, okay? So that, in a nutshell, um, I feel like I've gallivanted and galloped through this content. I hope, I hope it, was, uh, it resonated with you guys. Um, that kind of concludes my, my speaking part. If anybody has any questions, then more than happy to um, to answer the questions to the best of my ability if you actually put them in the true in the in the chat box. So by all means, and if you don't Thanks have so any much, it was um, a fascinating gallop. Um, I'm sure everyone <laughs> had a lot to take away from your insights and and the frameworks you shared as well. So we do have um, about five minutes or so left if people do have questions. Uh, they'd like to ask now otherwise you know we're always happy to um, receive emails and you know discuss or answer questions afterwards but I can see some things coming through oh a bit of congratulations thank you <laughs> thank you Brendan <laughs> yes that's what we like to see some positive feedback well done very good <laughs> I had one question Amanda it might be too big to answer now but um 
I think one thing I find interesting is how we can generate or create more of a feedback culture in our organisations. Because obviously we as individuals can kind of do all the work that you're suggesting, but what can we do kind of at an organisational level to be better at, like I say, creating that kind of culture? Well, I think, I think it, HR, the human resources department, if there is one, should take the lead on this and make sure that the CEO at the very top um, understand a feedback culture that is part of the values um, and that's why it works so well at, at a place like Disneyland Paris so I think it does have to come from the top and it has to be basically imbued in everybody's working uh, policies and even as part of the the performance review that it becomes actually you know receiving and giving feedback so yeah HR leading it with basically endorsement from CEO. Wonderful, thank you. I can see there is actually a question. Yes, um, feedback in terms of political correctness. Let me go back and see what the question was. Um, Marcus had said politically correctness, political correctness can prevent being frank. So perhaps we're yes, limited. Yes. Well, I think, I think again that goes back to um, understanding people's frame of reference. And again, it comes with experience. So. I think you have to really practice this. I mean, earlier on, I caught myself. I actually said uh, in my example, you're a bit weak in this area. And then I caught myself and I realized I would never say that to somebody. Um, so forgive me for that, by the way. Um, so I think, again, because that could be perceived as actually politically incorrect to almost tell someone that they're weak. It's, it's not perceived as something. So I should say maybe there are some difficulties here in this area. So I do think you have to be mindful, but if you give them specific examples of what you mean, then you're fine. You actually say you were great with the big ideas on this presentation, but actually on the detail, on the implementation plan, there were some gaps. Well, that's a better word. There were some gaps. Mm -hmm. And actually those gaps can have a really diff um, you know, negative impact on our company. So that's why we need to look at this together. Let's find a plan together. So I think, I think it, again, it's understanding the frame of reference, the values. I mean, sometimes it has to be really hard feedback, but then you might know the person really well and that's okay. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, yes, great. hopefully, thanks. thanks. Okay, great. Um, just to follow up, we will be sending an email tomorrow with a link to the recording. Um, we also always include a link to a little feedback survey. And as this is a, a <laughs> webinar about feedback it would be great if you could take a couple of minutes just to um, fill that in for us it's always useful to um, know what you think about these webinars and, and improve them for next time and just a little bit of kind of future forward from me we're running as you know we run these webinars every month next month we're actually talking about how to give a good webinar that's going to be developed delivered by Pfizer, our business development manager here, who many of you, many of you already know. So sign up for that one. Um, the link is on our website and we'll be sending out the invitation in, in the coming weeks. We're also, for those of you perhaps in London or easily accessible, we run a whole series of workshops on different elements of intercultural um, communication and specific communication skills and we're doing an early bird offer for the courses in the autumn it's um we put it on social media and you may have had an email about that but if you need more information or have any questions just let us know um, otherwise it looks like the questions have kind of finished for the moment yeah. but like I say if anyone has afterthoughts then please just drop us a line we're always happy to hear from you Otherwise, thank you so much, Amanda. It was a great session. I think everyone, oh. obviously, from the audience really enjoyed it. Thank and you. thank you all for attending. Hopefully, we'll see you on the next one. Have a thank great you. rest of your day. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.